Wow. Um, 15 years old. You mentioned God several times in this interview. Clearly, you are a man of faith. You, you were raised, you talked about your grandmother taking you to church, having you sing in the choir. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's so interesting how it, it's, you know, God, it says God chases those who he loves. And, you know, for a person like you, I know you're looking at it like, why God let this happen to me? But maybe even at that point, even though you clearly didn't all the way listen, it's like, look, this is, this could have, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm just trying to show you what it can be. Yeah. It's only thing that was confusing. It was just that I haven't, I had not lived that long and I had not saw, like right now, if something happened to me, I could tell you, hey, boy, I didn't do a lot of shit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. At that point, I was like, damn, I was just playing football. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and then when I, I, I hit a couple of blunts and I went to school and then I was, I was wearing a shit bag, you know what I'm saying? With this big ass scar going down my stomach. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn. So, it was just confusing, you know what I mean? I mean, I didn't know God, you know. I was aware of him, but I didn't know how good he is and, and, and you know, that the, the, the freedom of choice and what I chose at that age and stepping into a grown man's shoes and stepping into grown people business. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I was a yep. part, I was, I was a part of grown people's conversations. Like, I was holding... Two and three thousand dollar bombs worth of crack for people. You feel me? Like, you know, you entrusted your, you know, money with me, like, and you know, hey, hold, get shit the money. I, I got all the money. I got all the. You feel me? I used to hustle with Miami boys and stuff like that. So, it was, I was in the midst of a lot of things. You know, before I move this interview on, you mentioned the word choice. You also mentioned the word premeditation earlier in the conversation. And, um, you know, e everything could be and should be um, used as a, as a tool for learning. Right. Is somebody right now, this minute, as you and I are sitting here in front of one another, mm -hmm. somebody's doing 100 years because they didn't take five seconds to think about their actions. Yeah. Now here you went to talk to your cousin and you had all day to think about your actions. I did. Literally all day. But there's somebody who they're in the middle of something or found themselves in the middle of something. And instead of saying, you know what, let me just think because what I'm about to do can not only change my life, but it can change the life of all of the people I love, right. it can change the life of a potential victim and all of the people that that person loves. Huh. Um, right. Wow. How long were you in the hospital? Uh, I was, I, I had to learn how to do everything. So three months, I want to say. You were in the hospital for three months. Yeah, I started getting bed sores. I got addicted to morphine. I was uh, almost like almost three months, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't walk. And, you know, we didn't have really much. You know, I was on Medicaid. So, you know what I mean? I I don't think I, you know, I, I couldn't have been released. When Then when I did get released, I still had to have a nurse come. And she was, they was telling me like, look, you can either take care of this bag and it can come off in a year and a half. If you don't, the rest of your life. So I was like, damn, it's a hell of a task, you know what I'm saying? And like, and then that was just, you know, I had to wear the bag for a year and a half. And then I underwent surgery again. So that shit floored me again, you know what I'm saying? So this was, I was fucked up. 